Okay, it's day 31, and this dominant shoot, the one that I favor now, is undergoing textbook development. It's just waiting to unfurl these leaves, and I can't wait to see the foliage. For the rhizome I buried in the center, this piece had some hiccups along the way. And that's one of them, you know, it has this sort of dead leaf there. I didn't expect that. And now it has another hiccup. It has this sort of coil here. And I'm not sure what's going on. I think it just got stuck inside another leaf that's not opening for whatever reason. You know, so this thing has some problems. It's some kind of a, a mutant or... It's hard to imagine how these seedlings, which all come from the same rhizome, could have different growth outcomes. I mean, they should have the same exact genetics. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. You know, I'm not any kind of expert on, uh, you know, rhizomes or, you know, root reproduction. So I wouldn't know. But, you know, I just think that the genetics should be the same. So I'm giving these all equal conditions. So I can't really see what the problem is. So spraying fungicide on these two buds stopped the fungal growth and they look dried out now. Um, they don't look just slimy and nasty. So I think there might be some hope. I don't know if these can regrow a shoe system though. Uh, but being that they are attached to a rhizome cutting, maybe they can have the resources to uh, generate or regenerate um, uh, shoot apical mare stems so they can form fully functioning plants and have shoot systems. Currently they only seem to have root systems. And there's also another bud to the side of this, you know, it's buried in there. And you know, this is a very slow growing plant. So I don't know, at some point it could form a plant that will stick out on the side of this one. But for the time being, uh, this is all we see. So you can see a little springtail running along on the bark there and basically these things are ancient they've been around since the early Devonian which is 420 million years ago yeah if you look at the archaeological record uh, fossils of these things have been found that are just ancient and that just blows my mind as to how long these things have been around and they probably have never needed to really change all that much because their niche is so successful, they just eat decaying organic matter. So as soon as there were plants on land, they could start eating that stuff. And ultimately, they don't really harm anything. Uh, I vacuumed today. Hopefully, if any were escaping this pot due to it drying out, I got a lot of them on the carpet. And finally, we have these two buds, which are not really doing anything. They're just still a pale white and I guess development is in stasis. Uh, I don't think their rhizome cutting is any smaller than say the one that belongs to these two. And move the light away so you can see the green. So as you can see there's still some water left in there and I'm not going to add any more. Now knowing that the watering itself will directly water the soil from the bottom so I want to let things dry out a little bit so it's not just a complete infestation by springtails and also I don't want to cause any kind of a rhizome rot. It's day 33 and the water tray is empty. So if we look up here, the soil is still very damp in places so I'm not going to water for the time being but pretty soon I will. After all ginger is a jungle plant that likes wet environments. So I'll give it the moisture it needs later on. So this champion specimen is doing very well. It developed a kink. I think that's just the way this thing goes. And I expect uh, at least one leaf to unfurl from this. The central specimen is doing the second best. As you may recall, this entire part, a shoot essentially of a leaf, was caught in this. So I don't know why that was, but it was just some sort of defect that this outgrew. So I expect this to become a healthy leaf. And, you know, a second leaf to unfurl from here. Something like that. So in the background, you can still see a springtail running around. Let me try to focus on that. So you can see them running occasionally between the pieces of wood. I would consider this to be number three in terms of development. 
and there's this smaller bud attached to the same rhizome cutting. Now this one has stayed pretty stagnant in terms of size, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. It doesn't seem to have the same kind of rot that afflicted uh, these other two attached to the central rhizome. And then you have this rhizome cutting, which doesn't even have green butts. You know, they've stayed pretty much in stasis. Uh, this one on the left seems a lot more promising. This one seemed like it was molding over or rotting, uh, much like the two in the middle. But, you know, now that it's sort of more dry, it has this sort of deadish. I haven't applied fungicide to this bud yet, so I don't know what's going to happen. It seems to be doing okay. Okay, it's day 34, and development has been very interesting lately. And as you can see, there is a first true leaf, I think, or cotyledon maybe, waiting to unfurl. Um, you know, I can't really tell at this point. Uh, I just came from the Honeydew series, and those have two cotyledons that show up before they start making true leaves. So here's another viewpoint. And this one, of course, belongs to the central rhizome cutting. And, you know, I still can't really make sense of what's going on here either other than the simple fact that we're going to see an unfurled leaf pretty soon. So these two are numbers 3 and 4 in terms of development. And it's a little slow, but the one on the top definitely looks like it's coming along nicely. The one on the bottom is kind of slow and stunted in development, so I don't know if it's going to get to where we want it to be. So there's been some nice progress, but at the same time, uh, if you've been following my Honeydew series, there are these uh, little flies that have been really annoying and I think they come out of the potting mix. I think they're actually fungus gnats. So I thought they were white flies before but I caught some and examined them very closely and they don't seem to resemble any species of white fly that I've seen you know, online. So I think these basically come from eggs and damp potting mix which is what I bought and they're just you know, sporadically hatching out and becoming adults. You know, they do pose a danger to plants in that they can eat decaying roots. Uh, they'll feed on live roots too. So not necessarily, it's kind of a misnomer for them to be named fungus gnats. And I'll talk a lot more about this later, but I tried yellow sticky paper in the form of uh, Vaseline covered glossy yellow paper plates. And that didn't work, so I'm going to try other things. Um, this species can produce a lot of females, typically. And that results in a population explosion of fungus gnat. You know, if there's an infestation in the other pot, the honeydew pot, chances are there could be one in here as well. I have seen some. I have seen some adult fungus gnats kind of buzz around on this. Okay, it's day 35 of this ginger germination experiment. And as you can see, there's a healthy growth in... I would say three shoots and there's a fourth bud over there that's doing uh, okay it's still green it's not rotting and you know there's a potential for a fifth growth I'm not too sure about the others so anyway I'm holding a bottle of this uh, Tecano fungicide again because I decided you know I should spray that one spot where a bud essentially seemed to have rotted so here goes So I might as well cover the entire rhizome cutting because I want it to be safe from uh, fungal infection. And then I'll spray some water to dilute that so it's not just kind of a pile of goo over that one spot. Also that helps it let it soak in to the soil and uh, kill any fungus that's deeper down in there. I'm going to provide a surface watering for the other potential developing shoe systems too. And I'm going to spray on these spots where there are rhizome cuttings that didn't seem to have any bud developments too. Okay, so everything on the surface is uh, plenty watered and there's no water in the tray at the bottom of this plant spa. I haven't watered for quite a few days because uh, the soil is still very wet. You know, even before I sprayed all this water, the surface was a dark brown, it was wet. So 
this is the way it is with all my other plant experiments and basically I want the soil to have a chance to dry out a little bit uh, the macro situation is I think I have fungal gnat infestations you know in probably all three pots just because um, I have this potting mix that I bought from Lowe's and typically a uh, potting mix has the eggs or larvae of some of these species such as uh, fungus gnats so fungal gnats are these little critters that have larvae that will normally eat fungus that grows on decaying organic matter within the soil and as you can see this is basically a lot of dead wood chips uh, I don't know the exact composition of this potting mix but you know it's a good environment when it's too wet and I did have this soil very wet for a long time to develop uh, fungal infections and the fungal gnats will eat that the larvae which sounds good in theory but when they run out of things to eat and there's only plant roots left they're gonna start chewing on those and fungal gnats can accrue in huge numbers uh, they lay mostly eggs that turn to females it only takes a few males to fertilize all those eggs and basically then you have a huge population explosion of fungal gnat larvae and you can see fungal gnats uh, kind of climbing around from time to time this is mostly a problem confined to my honeydew germination experiment but you know at this point I'm exploring options on how to get rid of potential infestations also and as I've discussed there's a lot of springtails in this pot and their numbers have declined uh, seemingly precipitously because I let this soil dry out but I've been reading on some internet forums and I think applying a layer of fine grain sand at the top of all my plants should essentially solve both problems in one and I'd like to explore that before I try insecticides. So here's the most successful shoot system so far. It looks quite nice in essentially the sprayed mist of distilled water. Looks like it just rained. The second best shoot system is a little different in development. And it seems to have formed a loop instead of what should be the first leaf. I'm not sure if it's the first true leaf or cotyledon. I have to do more research and observation after a few days to see what the true situation is. And I'm thinking this is the second leaf. So development has been slow for this third rhizome cutting, but this shoot is coming along fine. And I think that should be able to develop if they're not directly competing for resources on a fierce level right now. So this spot is where I just sprayed Decano on another root cutting. So for the central rhizome, there are two buds that I sprayed Decano with, you know, maybe two episodes ago. And I'm worried that they were kind of rotting away, but uh, I think they're still alive. And you can see a little hint of green on the top one. And my eyes detect a little bit of green on the top of this lower larger bud too. So it's kind of hard to see with this light saturation, but uh, my eyes are telling me that it's there. And if that's true, then that means maybe they're trying to regenerate their uh, shoot apical marrow stems. And this could be another two buds. 